Uh, here, how you doing, my jungle friends? Yes, it's another math video. I know, I always say that. It's another science video. No, it's not. Mr. War, it's a math video. You always teach math. I know, it's what I do. I teach math. Yeah, look at, ooh, look at our feature marine animal. Whoa, of the day. Ooh, who are you, little fella? Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Cool. You're, like, really happy, but you... Oh, it's a secret. Okay. We have one of these really talkative, appears to me, animal features of the day. Okay, so you'll let me know later. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm glad. Yay, because, you know, we're supposed to be doing math. I know. Yes. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with our learning target. Okay, divide decimal dividends by non-unit decimal divisors. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Mr. War, but didn't we do this video just like this one with the same learning target? You know what? We did. And Engage New York knows how important this is, my friends, that you get this concept that they're going to do it again. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so it looks like we have our first problem right here on the page. And I think you may notice this looks somewhat familiar. We have ourselves a decimal dividend and we have ourselves a decimal divisor because both of these numbers have a decimal. So let's go ahead and rewrite this division expression as a fraction. I'm going to put my 34 and 8 tenths over 6 tenths. And remember, we went ahead and we wanted to express the divisor as a whole number. We multiplied it by a fraction that was equal to 1. Now, in this case, what would be the best to use? Okay, well, to get that into a whole number, well, we could multiply by fifths, which would make the divisor 3. That would if we multiplied by fifths because 6 times 5 but I'm not sure I want to multiply 34 and 8 tenths by 5. That's not going to be easy to work out. However, if we do multiply by 10 tenths, that would make both the numerator and the denominator whole numbers. So there's definitely a lot of choices here, but I like the idea that 10 tenths, the digits will all stay the same. That's important. So if I did that, multiplied this by 10 over 10, the digits won't change because I'm using the power of 10. So as always, as you know, we have many fractions equal to one that would create a whole number divisor here. But again, which fraction would be the most efficient? 10 over 10. And so we'll multiply that through and that's going to equal 348 divided by six. This isn't mental math like the basic facts we saw in the previous lesson, if you recall. So maybe before we divide, Let's estimate to give us an idea of a reasonable quotient. So I'm thinking of, of a multiple of six that is close to 348 and then divide. So let me go ahead and write it this way. So my, my little wave going on here, my little water symbol, um, indicates we're going to do an estimate divided by six. So we're trying to find that estimate that's going to give us a reasonable quotient. Now I could round 348. Uh, to 360. See, then I could use mental math to divide 360 by 6. Sure. And 360 divided by 6, that would equal 60. Let's go ahead and use the division algorithm to find the actual quotient. So what I'm going to do is rather than dealing with the decimals right now, I'm going to go ahead and take that decimals out. I'm going to use that division uh, fraction that we set up there and determine the answer as if they were whole numbers. So 300 couldn't be divided equally into six groups. So we're going to need to go to 340. In that case, we can get five, five, and that would actually be 50 okay, in each group. But let's just go ahead and figure out the algorithm. That's going to turn out to be 30. We'll subtract that difference, end up with four. We're going to go ahead and bring that eight down. And now six, that works out really nice with eight because six times eight is 48. And that's where that'll end, of course, with no remainder. So then I can take that answer then and say, well, then how many six tenths are there in 34 and eight tenths? Yeah. I can say that that would be 58. So the next thing I'd want to think about is, is our quotient reasonable? Sure, it's reasonable because look at, we had 58 and we had an estimated quotient of 60 and 60 is extremely close to 58. All right, I don't know. Was it just me or was that super easy? Yeah, okay. Yes, I've heard you guys are really smart too. 
Oh my goodness, this, I think this octopus here is actually um, learning our math with us. This is scary. Okay, well, let's go on to the next page. Yes. Okay. Oh my goodness, you're back. How'd you slip onto the next page? <laughs> It's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Hey, I like that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, not many of us can say that we have eight arms. Okay. <laughs> and in your case, tentacles. What? So, uh, yeah, you did. You already told us that you were really happy, right? Oh, the time is soon. Okay, that we're going to know. Okay. We'll wait patiently. I know you have some kind of news we should know about. Okay. All right. I'm just trying to remember. Was it me that suggested we have this? feature animal of the day or was it my executive producer hmm. okay yeah all right mr war we have seven and thirty six hundreds divided by eight hundreds well i think we're just gonna work through this like we did the last time right last time we did is we were thinking to ourselves we want to make that divisor a whole number i like that that's been kind of the focus and uh okay yeah 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 i know you know pick you pick you you're 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 an octopus. I mean, come on. We're, we're doing a problem here right now. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you had a name, too. All these feature animals with all the names, really. Okay, so let's go ahead and put 7, then, and 36 hundreds over, yeah, 8 hundredths. Okay, and we want to make that denominator a whole number, and we already kind of learned it's better to use that power of 10 because that means the digits won't change. So if I were to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 100, I would end up with 736 divided by 8. And just like the last problem, we had, you know, an issue with the dividend being 736 divided by 8. We can't really do mental math here. Okay, it makes it a little bit more challenging. We, we made an estimate. We're saying something, right, divided by 8. So it's a way of rounding our dividend. But we'd want to find a number that would be pretty compatible with 8. And looking at 736, I think 800, that might be going up kind of high. Uh, there are other ones you could do that would make it a little bit nicer, I suppose. How about we go down? Why don't we just say 720? Because 72 and 8 make, yeah, nice little basic facts there. So we have at least an estimate here. So let's go ahead and do our division algorithm. So we'll take our 736 and let's divide that by 8. 8 won't go into the 7, but it will go into the 73. We already know. 9 times because that's 72. Nice. I love it. Du, du, du. I drew a little arrow in here so that you know that that 6 needs to come down because we haven't divided into that digit yet. Now that gives us 16. And of course, 8 goes into 16 so nice. Two times giving us 16, of course, and then remainder 0. And so we end up with a quotient of 92. So then my question becomes, is 92 a reasonable? Yeah, that's a reasonable quotient because our estimated one was 90. So I'm just going to finish this number sentence up here and I'm going to go ahead and put 92 as 92 was the actual quotient to our problem. Woo! I'm loving it. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Oh, that never gets old. Okay, but going on to the next page, we need to do... Dun, dun, dun. Oh, my goodness. Petunia, you're here again. Oh, you just love learning math. That's awesome. <laughs> Now we have a whole new problem. We have 21 and 56 hundredths divided by 98 hundredths. First thing, let's rewrite that division expression as a fraction. We've done that before. 21 and 56 hundredths then over 98 hundredths. Now we know that before we divide that we want to go ahead and rename the divisor as a whole number. And we're going to do it this time though. Remember, we're going to do it by 100. Of course, because the divisor has, that's right, it's in the hundredths. We want to make a whole number. Now we end up with 2,156. And of course, here we end up with 98. Now in this case, this is interesting. Both the divisor and the whole number become 100 times greater. Now when we write the number that is 100 times as much is what we've done when we've multiplied, the digits shift to the left two places. Now, rather than writing the multiplication sentence to show this, I'm going to record that thinking using arrows. So let me go ahead and write my dividend 
and my divisor. And what I want to do is, since I'm making it 100 times greater, I'm going to make a little thought bubble, okay? Bubble! That's right, it's back. So what I want to do is just make a little tiny thought bubble. Bubble! Bubble, bubble! Okay, we have our 21 and 56 hundredths divided by our 98 hundredths. So what's really happening here is I'm going to show you with this green arrow here, the digits are shifting to the left. Now I know for you regular folk that may throw you off because you're seeing me do the arrow the opposite way. Okay, so the digits are shifting to the left. The decimal is moving to the right. It means the same thing. So don't be confused. So now that I've put up my little bubble, so that means that's how we get that 2,156. By the way, you can leave the comma off there, not necessary, but we tend to write it for the thousands place. Is this fraction equivalent to the one that we started with? It looks different, but it does show the fraction we got when we multiplied by the hundred hundreds. It is. Both the divisor and the whole number were multiplied by the same amount. So the two fractions are still equal. So don't panic, Mr. Wara. Whew, good thing. I don't want my blood pressure to rise. Yes, so because it's an equal fraction, the division will give us the same quotient as dividing 21 and 56 hundredths by 98 hundredths. So let's go ahead and estimate the 98, our divisor. Remember how we estimate the divisor. So up here, I'm going to write... So let me do my little equivalent sign. We're going to divide that by 100. Okay, so now we just need to estimate the whole. Yeah, 2,156. Uh, probably has a number that we can easily divide by 100. 100 times 22 happens to be 2,200. That's pretty close. In fact, it's closer to 2,200. Uh, so I'm going to round this one off here to 2,200. So if we divide that by 100, then I'm going to get... 22 because 22 times 100 is 2,200. Is that a reasonable? Sure, yes, that's reasonable. And it's very, very close to our, our dividend. Now we have 45 and 5 tenths divided by 7 tenths. So this time we're going to go ahead and rewrite this expression as a fraction. Okay, I can do that. Oh, that's a zero. Sloppy. Okay, and I'm also going to show a, a thought bubble. That's right. I'm going to show a thought bubble as we rename this divisor as a whole number. So let me go ahead and do it. Bubble. Oh, that wasn't a very good bubble. Bubble. There you go. Okay. That's my little thought bubble. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show that 45 and 5 tenths and my 7 tenths. And then I may notice right away that, yes, you know what? To rewrite that, I'm just going to remove that decimal here and or the digits are going to shift one time when power of 10, giving me 455 over 7. Remember, we found out that's going to give me the same quotient, okay? And we could make an estimate and find the, the quotient, okay? And in this case, we have 455 by 7. And what I see here maybe 42. So if I did a something divided by seven, maybe 420 could be an estimate, giving me an answer of 60. Okay, we, we did that again as a reminder. Now let's do another problem. Oh, Petunia, my goodness, you're just everywhere. <laughs> Man, thank goodness there's just one of you here. Woo, that would be way too much if we had a whole bunch of octopi all over the, the screen. But, um, okay, you're even getting more excited. What does that mean? Okay, good. This will finally know what this is all about. Okay, yes. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to drag you off the screen. Okay, so what's different about this one? Ooh, I noticed a big change. Look at that. The digits have shifted, and the decimal point is now over here. It's a different problem. So let's go ahead on this one here. Let's go ahead and just simply, yeah, let's just use a bubble. That's right. We can do that. Show this expression is a fraction with a whole number divisor. So let me go ahead and do it. Bubble, bubble. Whoa, that's a pretty wild bubble. Okay, so we'd have our four and 55 hundredths over seven tenths. Yes. Now, I want to make that a whole number, so I'm actually going to be multiplying by 10. So I'm only going to remove that. Yeah, the, the digit's only going to shift one time to make that a whole number over seven. So I still have a decimal in the dividend. 
Yeah, so this problem is similar but different from the one we just did. See, the digits are still all the same, but the hole is smaller this time. That's right, the hole still has a decimal point in it. Ha ha, we can see you. And the hole is one tenth the size of the previous hole. We still have a divisor of seven, but this time our hole is 45 and 5 tenths. Is the hole more than or less than it was in the previous problem? Sure, it's, it's less than. So is the quotient going to be more than 60 or less than 60? What do you think as we think about the problem we just did? Yeah, the hole is going to be smaller, obviously, because we can make fewer groups of 7 from it. Because there's that smaller hole, we can't make as many groups uh, from the 7. So the quotient will be less than 60. The hole is 1 tenth as large, so the quotient will be 2. And that's what we're learning here, is that the hole is 1 tenth as large, so the quotient will have to be 2 because we started with a, a smaller number. So now let's just go ahead and divide. So if we put our 45 and 5 tenths, and we're dividing by 7, okay, that decimal there, we want to go up, up, and away. That's right, right up there. And then 7 times 7 is 49 too large, but 6 would work because that's 42. We subtract, we get 3 left over. Let's bring down that 5 tenths. Now we have 35 tenths. Isn't that pretty? That's going to go in there 5 times exactly, leaving us now with no remainder and an answer of 6 and 5 tenths. Okay? Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Ooh, I just love math. Yes! So now we have our quotient and does that quotient make sense? It does because the, the estimated quotient we had in the last problem was 60. This is one tenth that. And you can see if we were to divide 60 by 10, we would end up with 6. And then see how extremely close that is to the actual answer. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. I know. I had to do that again because it was just that good. Now, oh, what? No. Is it coming to an end? Really? Well, we never heard anything about the secret. What was the, the whole secret about this? Uh, yeah, you're going to tell us. Oh, there you are. You're going to tell us there's some big secret. Yeah, that you're so happy. Oh, the time. It's here. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So what is it? So what are you so happy about? Oh, because you are actually a animal feature. You can't move unless I move you. Okay, I, I see. Once I move you, We'll be able to see what you're so happy about. Okay, let me go ahead and move you. Let's see. Here we go. Oh, look it. She had babies. Oh, my goodness. This is too much. <laughs> yes, so that's what you're so happy about. Okay. What? Okay, okay. What do you got to You gotta watch over your little brood? <laughs> that's too funny. Sorry. Okay, yeah. All right, Mr. Wara. Mr. Wara, let's keep it together. <laughs> it's kind of hard. Okay, I'm trying. Now, my friends, guess what? It is time. This is, thank goodness. Now, live long and prosper.